guys. What's going on? What's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I'm joined by current host of the Behind the Wall podcast, former left, former starting left guard of Penn State. Uh, man, Landon Tangwell, what's going on, man? Thanks so much for taking the time. What's up, Ian? I'm excited to be here, man. This should, this should be a fun one. Yeah, dude. So, you know, you played, first of all, I, correct me if I'm wrong. You were the third best or the third prospect coming out of Maryland in 2019 or 2020. Uh, so I was actually 2021. I was no, so I was actually I do have to correct you. I, I don't know where you looked, but on, on 24-7, I was the number one dude, really only because Caleb Williams was DC technically. So right. he was clearly the number one dude in the DMV area. But uh, but as far as Maryland, I actually I think I had that, maybe not on rivals, but on 24-7. But uh that's all in the past, man. I uh yeah, I had a had a good high school career, uh, played Olu a ton in high school. We played I was at only a good council for uh, really two seasons because I didn't play there my freshman year. And then my COVID, uh, COVID season was my supposed to be my senior football season. So I kind of decided to early enroll instead uh, and get to Penn State faster. But yeah, that, so that, that, that led me to play Olu a couple times in the WCAC. He went to Gonzaga College High School with Caleb Williams. Uh, and I went to Our Lady of Good Council. Uh, well, they're in D.C. We're in Maryland. Played him a couple times. I'll always gloat to him that we never lost. Uh, and we, we we beat him in the playoffs my last year, so I always rag on him a little bit. But the, it's it's a pretty big competition. Like if you don't know, the WCAC is probably the best uh, high school sports football league. Uh, not even just really football, but sports in general. But definitely football in America. Many times throughout the year, we'll have four teams within the top uh, twenty five high school teams. So it gets it gets real competitive in there. Yeah, dude. No, I mean it's 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 totally a big deal. It's uh, high school recruiting is always like so much fun to kind of dive into because that's really where, I mean, really all across the board, right? You see how colleges fill out their roster, top guys going down, you know, just going down the list all the way down to two stars, and just kind of it, it's really cool seeing college coaches build out their roster because it's so much different than the NFL, right? Like in the NFL, you're bad, you're rewarded with top picks, but in that college game, it's completely different where it's just all hands on deck. It's it's truly like you got to work every single day of the year. So it's always I, super, uh, su super interesting. Man, I think that's why everybody's so excited for NCAA 24 that's yes. coming out. I mean, because it's going to be whole I new. Like, everybody's played Madden franchise. Let's see what let's see what they do. Hopefully EA doesn't mess this up. But uh, I think that's why everybody's excited for that. Should be should be a lot of fun to be able to con control a, a franchise. And I'm going I'm going like low level. I'm going to like a Yukon and I'm going to make them great. <laughs> Dude, for sure. Bro, I'm going to scoop that up on midnight, man. I'm so yeah. excited for that game. It's going to be awesome. I, dude, I remember I bought a PS3 like a couple – like uh, I think it was actually during the whole virus, uh, you know, when mm -hmm. things were locked down. I bought a PS3 and NC14 uh, or NC Football 14, and I was like trying to run franchises and stuff. I got the disc in the mail. and It was all scratched up, so I'm like, all right, screw it. What a waste of money. But um, no, so you pick Penn State coming out of high school. Mm. Obviously, a fantastic program, story program. Why did you kind of lean towards Penn State? Obviously, close yeah. to home, but. Yeah, and I'll talk to this, and honestly, I can kind of lump Olu uh, Fashionu into this just because we came from the same exact areas, like same background. Um, so, you know, it was it was one of those things. It was closer to home. It was three hours from, from basically both of our houses. Um, and so that was a big thing, proximity. A lot of times recruits, they, you'll see them stay at the crib, man. Like, I – and there's a reason why USC doesn't really come over to Maryland and the DMV to recruit because you're just so less likely to hit on those recruits. It's too far. People don't want to be that far from their family. So it was just three hours away. And then Coach Franklin, man, he was he was a really uh, big factor in the reason that a lot of guys chose the program. Um, he is a fantastic recruiter and does a really good job of making sure he's always there for you. And I can attest to that because I had to retire while I was still playing football here real supportive throughout the whole thing. So, uh, so someone that you always, you know, sometimes the fans, he can get a lot of hate, but at the same time, it's like he really cares about the players and you see that. He actually was at, so he went to uh, Olu's draft party down in Southern Maryland and then dashed over from Olu's party <laughs> right when he got drafted uh, to Chop Robinson's house, which is like, it's like through, you have to go like through Virginia, like through kind of like DC area and all the way up to get up there. It took him like an hour and 15 minutes, I think. And then he got to Chop's house right as Chop Robinson got drafted at uh, 21 or 22 to the Dolphins. So real cool guy. You can see how much he cares. So it's it was exciting to play for him. And I think that is one of the big reasons uh, we, we, we decided to come here. 
Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So you and Olu, you guys hit Penn State, and you were a left tackle in high school. Mm. So they bounce you inside to left guard in year two or year one, like immediately. Was that the plan? Um, yeah, so it was kind of – I was a little bit of both. You you got to be versatile, and I think that's something big with – if you're a first-round guy like Olu and you're a clear, like, cut, like, left tackle, franchise left tackle, you you can do that and you can be okay doing that. But if you're not one of those guys, you have to be a guard tackle guy that – you, you know, the Jets probably carry seven, eight guys, uh, I'd, I'd say, during the season on the active roster for the offensive line. Well, I need at least one or two of those guys to be able to play center and guard or guard and, or guard and tackle. Like, you have to have versatility. Um, so that was my thing coming in. I was comfortable playing both. And obviously, like I said, Olu is a lockdown left tackle. Like, you don't, you don't move him. You don't need to – we saw what the Lions did with Penny Suell – a couple years ago that he was elite left tackle, probably the best prospect in a long time coming out of Oregon. They flipped him over to right tackle and he figured it out because he's such a good athlete, just signed a huge contract, but it took him a while. So I think that's a big thing. Like Olu needs to come in and he's going to play left tackle. Like there, there should be no debate about that. That's where he has to go. Uh, keep those guys where they are just otherworldly. Just keep them in the same position. Hell yeah, man. So you got some tape. Versus Mich mm. Penn State, Michigan, Penn State, uh, Ohio State. I think. Yeah, Ian, look, Ian. I was telling you, man. I said, you know, I, I. This is this this cut up, man. Is Michigan, Ohio State only? We ain't putting no no slack teams, uh, no <laughs> warm up games. We're talking the best teams in in college football in the Big Ten. Uh, and we're gonna see kind of how Olu stacked up and how he fared against uh, some of the best defensive lines. I think Ohio State probably has the best one, and then Michigan is is right behind them. Uh, so, but yeah, if you, if you ready to get into it, this, this is what I love to do, man. I love to get after film breakdowns and, uh, and stop me at any point. If you need to me to clarify a little bit, sometimes I'll get a little too O-line speechy. No, so, I, do. uh, I, I don't want to confuse anybody. So just like, let me know if, uh, if you want anything clarified, but if you, if you're ready, let's get into it. Sick, man. Yeah. Let's hop in. So let's right. see. Add this. So, Should be good to go. Yeah. So first clip we're uh, Michigan. Um, I think we're on the 25 yard line. Uh, so we're going to do some pass clips first. Um, I got five pass pro clips from Olu, and then we'll get into five run game clips. So uh, first up, he's going against number 17 McGregor here. Um, and this one's kind of just showing. Sorry. So this one's kind of just showing this is this is just such a freakish ability from Olu to you see how he's got his hands up right there and then jumps, basically jumps down. So right there, hands up. And then he's like baiting McGregor. Like McGregor, he's like, here, take the bull rush right there. You see McGregor start to bend down and get ready to bull rush and get his hands inside on Olu. Olu's like, yeah, take that bait. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set it up. Boom. Drops his anchor. And you'll see Olu do this a lot. The double under technique where he'll drop. I mean, he's bo both feet are in the air there. He he's basically jumping right there. And he's. Bam, planting himself in a just a power angle where he is taking McGregor's weight and redirecting him straight up so that all that energy that McGregor's coming in with that bull rush, and he got his hands inside, but Olu is all about leverage. He, when he sinks down like that, when he hits that, that sink right there, dude, he has leverage. He can lift you up every single time, and he just has his hands up under you. Uh, and then here we'll let the, we'll, we'll let the clip uh, play once through. And then I like to see this this finish at the end, but boom, anchors, guys not going anywhere, and then kind of finishes them off too. So you love to see that from uh from Olu there. But if you want to walk through any any questions at all about specifically about what you're seeing, well, dude. So funny side note, man. The Jets scooped up McGregor in the undrafted free agent market, so they might be going head to head. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what's so. up. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've known him for a long time. He's a good dude. Uh, very athletic and long. So. It's, you know, but obviously Olu's a first round pick for a reason. For sure. No, one thing that that always to me stood out about Olu really throughout the course of his Penn State career was his ability to, to embrace power, right, to kind of absorb it, maybe sink back a little bit and then just boom, like you said, drop the anchor and just kind of sit back and just neutralize, neutralize the ends, right? Yep. He kind of does a really good job, in my opinion, of not like because if he. I don't want to say loses the first, like loses the point of attack, but when he gets that initial contact, he might sink back a little bit, but then it's just like, it's almost like there's two levels 
to trying to bull rush Olu. It's not just a full, once you get him, you got him, and he's just going to break right through. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I think he has incredible anchor uh, anchoring ability. And I saw some, like, there's certain guys that, that do draft stuff for NFL and ESPN, and it's like, dude, I swear some of them do not actually watch tape because I saw, like, questions about Olu's anchor, and I'm like, nah, man. Like, like you don't see – look throughout the whole season. You might see one or two clips that I actually put in here. So Olu might be mad at me. But towards the end, I got to get after him for one clip. <laughs> but it, it's against probably one of the better pass rushers in all of college football. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit later. But, yeah, man, right here, I mean, it's just beautiful stuff by Olu. And, like, that is him having incredible football IQ. And this is, this is Trent Williams-level stuff where he's toying with him, just come, he, his hands get kind of high right there, and he knows McGregor's getting ready to go bull rush. So he gets ready, boom, sits down, finishes it. Uh, and then he finishes it off too, which I love. You got you to love a little nastiness. That's that's big time to bring to your offensive line. For sure. Uh, so next clip, we going against Jack Sawyer, number 33, Ohio State. Probably going to be a high uh, first-round pick next year. So this is uh, – he goes against JT, uh, him, and then JT – who was also probably going to be a top 10 pick next year. So Ohio State should, could very well have two first-round uh, DNs next year, and this is the type of guys that o Olu's having to face on a week-in and week-out basis. Um, but initially right here, uh, just getting out in basic pass pro, he's locked on this DN, meaning he's not in the slide side, so he doesn't have uh, any help from his guard. So he knows he is one-on-one -on, -one uh, on the edge with this uh, elite edge rusher. So... This is what makes Olu so special is that ability to use that like hand right there, that inside hand. A lot mm -hmm. of guys just they they're not that precise with their use of independent hands. Um, they they kind of do a lot of two hand punching, um, a lot of leaning when they punch. One thing that's really good about Olu is he has those long arms, uh, but he's so precise and defined with his hands. So. He sees that that Jack Sawyer here kind of gives his shoulder pad. That DN is going to continue to work upfield. So he puts what is nearest to him, his inside arm. Uh, and so this is kind of keep him from getting bull rushed. He, he just gets hands on instantly, inside hand, boom, right there. And that just that stunts Sawyer's rush. This is the, I mean, this is the type of stuff that you see Trent Williams do. Like this is the hand fighting uh, and the athletic ability. You know, not as fluid as Trent. Uh, look, like Olu's a little more stiff, but the the just the the football IQ and understanding of what a rusher wants to do and how am I going to neutralize that from Olu, he just has a fantastic understanding of that. Yeah, dude. Another thing too, man. It's just like I don't care who they're playing, uh, who you guys are playing. It's like Olu to me just never gets beat off the line. Like he explodes off the snap. And I feel like that's just it just puts him at such a great great advantage because he never like going up against speed rushers and whatnot. Like mm. he's he's always in a good position to, to make plays and kind of just try to neutralize the D end. Yeah, he he does a great job getting out all the time and what we call getting to his spot. So uh it's just th this is just like easy. This is just another day in the office for Olu Man uh out here in Pass Pro. And one thing that you see him do a lot with this left hand is you see, watch this left hand right here kind of circle out it kind of circles around to get a good placement on that outside mm -hmm. shoulder you'll see him do that a lot it's kind of like a latch technique where he's getting that he's getting that outside hand on and then he's gonna refit it but you got to think it's easier to to kind of swing that arm around and latch it on and then refit then punch straight on because that's what defensive linemen are kind of trained to go against so you want to be you want to make sure that you're uh, not giving them something too easy to swipe down so you'll see him hit that latch, and then he kind of yeah. gets back under. It does. You don't see too much of a refit here, but Olu does a really good job, pretty often refitting his hands when he gets that that left hand outside, and then always in good power angles. Like you see these angles he gets himself into, where that is straight, like redirecting everybody's energy back vertical. Uh, that's something that Joe Thomas talks about and does really well. Is a lot of guys would think, hey, I need to sit down, sit like you're on a toilet to stop him. No, it's actually creating power angles and redirecting dudes up instead of sitting down and sitting back. So that that's something that Olu does really well, and just it's just so natural to him that that's the one of the reasons why he went so high. Uh, is just his 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 physical nature and understanding of offensive line play is is really amazing.
but uh we got another clip from ohio state here i'll kind of just roll through these like i said just put, put some clips up and these are the best pass rushers that you see all year so uh out and pass pro i put this one on in here because what i really like to see from olu is boom look at this this hand flash that he puts on 97 fakes him right there pulls it back in <laughs> yeah so yeah it's it's pretty great he's so precise with his hands so it might look doesn't hit him kind of fakes him out a little bit brings it back down we talked about he loves that double under sometimes it's a one under if he can only get it but kind of then he brings that right hand too because you got to think when he when when he throws that left hand the defense alignment now thinks okay i need to turn this into a bull rush or i need to get ready to work some type of move but olu just come this is what you call disrupting a pass rusher's rhythm so th this rusher he, he's all out of sorts he doesn't know when to work his move because olu's throwing this hand flashing it kind of scaring him essentially and then boom just grips him up double under and once again you just see this constant you see that angle he's lifting him up again like it's it's all natural but this is what a lot of guys don't do a lot of guys will try to sit down and stop uh and to stop momentum but olu directs it up and i think sometimes people will say that he plays out of his legs a little bit but i think that's really more uh you know and sometimes that can be a problem in run game but it's a lot of it is that's what he tries to do. He tries to redirect and lift guys up uh, and instead of, you know, he's not the biggest, I'm going to maul this player. Like he'll finish dudes off, but he's not exactly like a mauler in the run game. Um, but he just, he's always so well positioned in, in pass and in run. Like even see how long his arms are like this, this cat clearly at Ohio state has some long arms, but just refits even at the last second. So he's always working uh, refit and, and being in the best position possible. For sure. Yeah. No, I think another thing that's really cool. I mean, you kind of touched on it, but he always stays inside, which mm. I like on, on defenders. And like he, for me, you never, when I was watching him, he never really looked like somebody. And again, I guess maybe coming out of the snap has something to do with that. Well, and he does. Yeah. Play. He dude, he's so long and just big. He doesn't have to overset guys. Like he, he, and he's so precise with his hands. Um, he just, he doesn't allow, he doesn't give them the inside move that a lot of defensive ends like to take. Um, but we will – we'll get into something here in a little bit. But he – like, dude, he's just it, – it's hard to beat him. When someone has that great of an anchor, they're that precise with their hands, and they don't overset you, it's like, okay, how – like, what do I do? How do I go about beating this guy? Um, so one more time here. And this is just kind of – I'm not exactly sure. I, I've, I've watched this over a couple of times. I could never really figure it out exactly what uh, – it looked like Olu thought it was a stunt here, but I just want to just show you his just natural ability to move in pass pro, just fluid. And this is what I mean. You go and watch some Trent Williams tape, and you will see this same type of stuff. So Olu, look, he 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 gets out in his stance, and he is so ready for this guy to be coming, and he just boom <laughs> opens up that gate. But it's like, but then so what happens? He doesn't even what happens does isn't what he thinks is going to happen. Uh, so that's not you know it, it, he kind of messes it up here. But, like, look at this position that he's in right here. I mean, that left <laughs> leg is – it's he's in more of a squat. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, please, you can put a name behind it. I don't know what that is. Um, to be in that position and then turn his ankles out, both his feet, boom, redirect, be blocking one dude with one hand, and then grab the other guy with his left hand and lift him up and throw him. Like this, this is some crazy stuff right here, uh, and just just natural ability that Olu Fashion who has that other guys do not have. I mean, yeah, dude, this was probably the most impressive play so far, man. Like, yeah, to be in that position and you finish off blocking two guys. I mean, dude, I, I'm, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, send him this clip. He's excited. He's geeked up. I'll maybe I'll throw this on Twitter. We'll have to add Aaron Rodgers yeah. um, because he's excited about this one. Um, all right, let's get into this. Is the last pass pro clip. Uh, so let's get into this one. This is where Olu just one clip. And honestly, it was really hard to find a clip where Olu struggled. It was only in, in the pass pro. It was only like one or two times in Ohio state and it didn't happen in the Michigan game. Um, so I just want to say that like, these are, few and far between so me even putting it on here as one of his five pass pro clips 
probably isn't even right, but I just do want to show something that uh, that he struggled a little bit with. And these are the type of edge rushers. JT, uh, I'm not going to even pronounce his last name. I'm not going to try. I'll butcher it. But JT uh, does a fit. He is going to be a top ten draft pick next year. He's going to continue on that that long storied Ohio State defensive ends mm. getting drafted high. So this dude is talented. Um, so one thing here is Olu gets out. I'd say a little late. That's why you see this like rushing from him almost, where it's like, okay, I gotta go. Um, he gets out kind of flat and then gets vertical. Um, and the problem with that is how he goes flat to vertical so quick is that he turns his numbers completely. So boom, right here, you can't even see the seven and the four anymore. So you are giving uh, that defensive end some some serious uh, in you know leverage to the quarterback around you. But right here. We're still, I mean, the, you see that position. I mean, a lot of guys are falling. You see the angle that his body's at, that he's mm -hmm. like, he's basically falling flat backwards. And then re, he's really good at basically fully jumping. You see his, you see both his feet come up off the ground, plant down. Uh, now, granted, he, he, this is where he normally does this at the depth of five to seven yards. Where he messed up on this rep is he tried to do the same thing that he does at five to seven yards of depth at two to three yards. So, uh, you know, this is a little bit of getting out late and going against an elite edge rusher is the reason he kind of lost his rep here. But, I, I mean, still, you see the talent. You see the ability. Um, you just need to let Olu develop a little bit. But he is he's more than ready to come in and let, and let Aaron Rodgers sling this thing uh, and fully protect him. So, Yeah, so one thing that I, I, I'm curious to kind of get your thoughts on What's really cool about Olu coming to New York is that he doesn't have to play right away. Tyron Smith is there. Now, mm. Tyron Smith is 33 years old. He's only on a one-year contract. Does, unfortunately, have a pretty long list of injuries. So there's a chance that Olu could be playing this season. But I think it's really cool for, for fashion who coming in to have a guy like that, a former All-Pro you know, longtime NFL vet, to just pour all of his knowledge into him. Where, where do you, what do you kind of make of that? Yeah, honestly, I forgot you guys did that. That is huge. I, I haven't even talked to Olu about that. Um, that's really exciting for him because Tyron is kind of that – he was kind of that newer school, like late 2000 – like early 2010s where it was like these dudes on the offensive line started to get truly freakish where it's like what – like this is this is otherworldly. When you had Tyron Smith protecting, uh, protecting Romo and Prescott, like it was a good day. No one was getting to the quarterback. And I think Olu has a lot of that in him. I see a little more Trent Williams in Olu than more, I'd say, more than Tyron Smith, just because the way he moves is a lot more fluid and just free. Tyron Smith always had like a clean, hard set that he was locked in. Olu's just kind of always like moving around, independent hands. Tyron Smith is very like set. I don't know exactly how to describe, but he's just strong and set in there at left tackle. Um, I, 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 I sooner rather than later, if I'm the Jets front office. I'm I'm letting Olu play. I don't know what's the contract on Tyron Smith. Do you know? One year. Okay. Uh, I mean, well, if you're not if you didn't pay him that much, I don't know, man. You gotta you gotta get Olu in there. Uh, who who you guys got? Do you know like week one, week two? Sorry, I probably should have looked at that. No, no, they haven't even dropped it yet. So. Oh, they have. Oh, that's right. It hasn't came. I'm I'm over here. I'm a Steelers fan. Forgot that. Yeah, I mean, it depends like kind of what edge rushes you're looking at. Like week one, if you guys go against the Dolphins and Olu has to go against Chop. Like, I don't know. I, I'd let Olu play against Chop than Tyron. I, this is He went against them every day in practice. That'll be a fun uh, kind of AFC East rivalry for years to come uh, and, and kind of that edge tackle matchup you're always watching. You guys will, will have that for a long time, so it should be fun. But, uh, but we'll, we'll move on from this. Uh, really, like I said, his pretty much his only bad play all year in pass, bro. He did not allow any other pressures, sacks, nothing like that. Which is crazy um, because, you know, if you go back – sorry to cut you off, but if you go back to that play, yeah, like what was the end result? Yeah, I mean, incomplete pass. I mean, yeah, that's that, – his, his like worst – I mean, I'll be honest. This was – this is his worst rep all year. And I, like I said, I did him kind of dirty, but I, I want to give the fans a full overview uh, of what you're getting with Olu. Like this is his worst rep all year. And like I said, if he just does that at five yards of depth instead of three, he wins every time. It was just he did it a little too early – but he's got all the tools and the intangibles to not let a quarterback get hit for for 18 games in a season. Like he doesn't, 
he he can clamp that thing down for sure, uh, man. For sure. Let's let's get into uh, his run game here, though. Uh, so this is where Olu fell, you know, fell a little bit in the draft when 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 people started to kind of really look into his tape and said that they they felt like he needed to improve in the run game. Um, I think he can he can be very dominant. There are times we can get a little high. Uh, we talked about he likes to try to use leverage and kind of lift guys instead of drive straight like out. Uh, but I mean, that's his game. A lot of the NFL offensive line play is positioning yourself uh, between and, you, you know, understanding where is my running back going? Uh, where Where is he trying to get to? Uh, and I'm going to position myself on that hole because he, at the NFL level, it's really hard to just maul guys. Kind of like you see him do right here. And this is this is uh, 55 Mason Grant from Michigan is 100 percent the best defensive tackle in uh, in the big in all of college football. He won MVP of the Rose Bowl when he was in it. And Olu does a great job. First thing I want to show you, too, and, and this is kind of just deeper into offensive line play is Olu gets on a great angle. So instead, you see him stab that foot back and really accelerate into this block. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys would kind of that foot would kind of lag in the air. It would take a while to get down. They'd get on the side of 55. Now, like Olu drops that foot, boom, gets on a good angle, drops his whole body and is so strong, just comes in. He understands that if you attack that hip, that'll get a guy down uh, and then finishes off 55. Nasty. Yeah, so that's you know that's uh, you you get that nasty as Olu likes to finish and this like I said we're showing the best defensive line uh, that there was in college football right here and he's taking him for a ride so we'll get into uh, once again here Michigan again just showing a little bit of Olu's athleticism so let's get him out in space uh, and this one I really like so if you watch. A lot of times in the NFL, like wide zone, when you're going against a defensive end and McGregor is pretty wide out here, guys struggle because they're on an island. Like you have to find a way. It's it's essentially when you're running outside zone versus a wide nine like this, it is almost pass pro. It's like you're in pass pro, which Olu thrives in. So if you watch him here, Olu, because of the, the, the positions that he puts his bodies in, he is able – to kind of give McGregor his chest. You see that right there? Like a lot of times that's a red flag, giving a defensive lineman that ability, you know, that just opportunity to strike your chest. But Olu is so strong that he is, once again, this is, these are the angles we talk about. He goes from this angle to lift. <laughs> so, and McGregor literally goes in the air right there. He lifts McGregor fully off 265, 270 pounds. Boom, lifts him up fully repositions him uh, and does his job kind of eventually gets on the play, but that's not, that's not on Olu. Olu, right. this is, like I said, this is really impressive and where you see a lot of defensive linemen uh, make a fool of offensive linemen because it, it's honestly almost harder than pass pro because not only are you in space, but you have to go get them in pass pro. They're trying to get to the quarterback that you're protecting. Like you got to be the attacker. So this type of stuff and boom, lifting him, driving him, uh, and making sure he doesn't make the tackle. Love that stuff from Olu right there. Um, and we stay, we're staying in the Michigan game. He had a really – and stop me at all if you want, but he had a really good Michigan game, uh, dominated what was, I think, the, the best defensive line in college football. Right? All them and Ohio State were, were up there for sure. Uh, and the, really their whole front seven, it was just difficult to go against and smart coaches. Um, so right here you see a little bit of a uh, – this is what we call pin and pull scheme. So we got tight end and guard both blocking down uh, and then Olu in the center pulling around. So this is getting outside. I don't know exactly what type of offense uh, you guys are, you guys get into over there in New York, but uh, Olu can, he can get out there. He can, like I said, Trent Williams type, get him in space. He is going to uh, eat someone up like a little DB right here. Number zero yep. sizes him up, sinks down. That's one thing Olu really does well is he, he sinks and then gets that, those hands up under the armpits right there and like this dude is what like all of five nine olu six six but finds a way once again finds a way to get leverage on these dudes and then you see that like that every time you'll you'll find olu fashanu in this body angle <laughs> right there i mean it, it's like it's like clockwork man he does it every time it's that's he understands how physics work and how you how you get someone up out of there you got to lift them up and then he just drives 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 finishes them off 
So that's that's once again, you're getting some nastiness. This is a rough, nasty game. Harbaugh was suspended for it. It was a rough one. Olu setting the tone for his team uh, and being that guy that they needed. Uh, obviously, weren't able to get the job done, but this is this is nasty work right here, man. That kind of fall at the end too. You love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a little. It's just it's just demeaning. It demeans the DB a little bit. It just lets them know, like, yeah, don't. When I come around, like, and you're in the alley, you get get out of there because I'm gonna put you down again, dude. And that's the type of stuff that the Jets need, man. I mean, granted, they they went out and they made a whole bunch of additions this season with, you know, like I said, Tyron Smith, uh, Morgan Moses. They added a guard from Baltimore, John Simpson. Um, mm-hmm. so you know, looking at at 2023 2022 and whatnot we should on paper be better uh if of course everybody stays healthy but this is like kind of the aspect of the jets uh o-line that i really feel like was just missing throughout these past couple years just that nasty edge i want to humiliate defenders i want to like beat them down uh mentally um and then they all Mm. go ahead no no go ahead no go no i was gonna say too that uh last year they drafted joe titman out of wisconsin Mm. And he kind of has that mentality a little bit, which I like. So for me, yeah. that's that that's something that I'm going to be looking for uh, if Olu does in fact play this year. Yeah, how did you guys feel about Elijah Vera Tuck? Has he been uh, pretty, oh, pretty solid? The- yeah, I know. And then obviously, I know Makai Becton's sore subject uh, for many a reasons. I think Olu is very different than Makai Becton, uh, and Becton had all the potential to be great. When you get that's you know we won't get into that, but when you got like off the field problems and stuff like that, it's that makes it difficult. Then when you got those uh, other factors coming in, Olu is someone that is uh, came back another year for a lot of people. They know that he came back for another year so he could finish off his schooling. Uh, really, really smart kid type of guy. Always had a 4.0, never in trouble. So th- this type of guy you want on your on your team, man. Uh, he was in supply chain management. So he's going home every night and doing like four hours of homework and quizzes while other guys just did dumb stuff. So it's like, trust, trust me, this is not Makai Becton. And this is the type of guy uh, you want protecting your quarterback. Yeah, dude. I mean, he would have, uh, he would have been, sorry, my leg keeps hitting the, uh, the mic cord. <laughs> I don't want it to screw up, but um, I, uh, I felt like Olu was going to be a top 15 pick last year. If he would have came out. That's, uh, I think that was kind of the consensus. I don't really think him coming back another year was swaying where he was going to go. Um, I think Joe Alt probably being uh, a little more defined, I guess, in, in pass pro. I think Olu's better. I'm going to be biased. But, um, you know, Joe Alt and, and JC, uh, some teams just – but at, at where he was, it was kind of like you're either going to be one, two, or three this year or next year. It just depends what other tackles are in the draft. But it was all about Olu just coming back and getting that degree. Like that is something he takes serious. And I promise you that is, like I said, the type of guy you want on your team, not – Hey, let me go get this money as quick as possible. I mean, you have to think about how how mature a, a 20 year old has to be to say, Hey, I'm good. I'm gonna turn down this insane money so I can finish my degree and then I'll go, I'll go get that money next year. I mean, that yeah. is someone who is very mature. And like I said, you will Olu will not have any problems uh in New York as far as anything, you know, off the field and just be he'll be a good uh locker room culture guy. Uh, that's what that's one thing I will say. Yeah, that's what we need, man. That's what we need. It's it's good stuff. Right here, I wouldn't really talk about it, but Olu does a good job on this combo. Like just he puts his body in great angles. You see there, it's it's like once again, it's a 45 degree angle. Boom, working against, like I said, the best defensive tackle in all of college football. And this is what I mean of being really good at positioning his body and uh and knowing how to to wall guys off. And you have to do that a lot in the league. So he positions his body and then boom. Not only positions his body, makes sure ten doesn't take the hole, but I mean it's there. The Olu gave it to him, uh, and then he says, "You know, I'm also going to finish you off too." Yeah. So you you, you yeah. got you got to love it, man. You got to love it if you're a Jets fan. Uh, this is exciting stuff that that you're getting out of Olu. Um, right here. Oh, sorry. You want you want to go? You got any questions? No, I was just going to say, man. Like, because you know, thinking back to like the draft process. People like uh, I, I guess maybe you know like the draft insiders and stuff. The the concerns with Olu were, were always the same, you know, for like months, really since the season ended. Mm. It was run game and the game against Ohio State. But even, to me, like even first of all, like the big dude when you're talking about Big Ten trench like trench play, 
Mm. Like that's top of the line. Like that in the SEC. Like the like I like what about the games against Iowa? Uh the two games against Michigan, right? The other game against Ohio State. You know, like I mm. felt like it, at times there was almost this, this witch hunt against Olu for him. It was almost, I don't know. It's it, to me, it was just weird. Like people, it kind of just felt like people were making the case for him to not be a top 10 pick. Exactly. Makes- it was like, he was up there for so long that it was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. He came back. He can't be, he can't be uh, the fifth, fourth overall pick. Like there's no way. So I, I think there was some of that with kind of why Olu uh, felt to you guys outside of the top 10. But uh, I mean, he is – he's everything you want in a left tackle, and the ceiling is still there. Like, the room for him to grow uh, is, is still so high, and I kind of feel like Joe Alt, that wasn't fully the case. Um, mm-hmm. And I – you know, like I said, I'm, I'm comparing him, but I, I really do think you guys got fantastic value uh, w- where you were picking at. Uh, right here, this is this is a really – so gap scheme, this is like power, counter stuff. And uh, so he's got a combo with the guard, comes down, and he – Bangs that guy over, boom, creates that gap. And he didn't. This is what I mean of him having a great football IQ. Instead of just trying to get off real quick and get to 25, he waits, waits, make, sh- make sure 26 is out of that gap, and then waits for 25 to kind of come across and get over uh, and then clear him out. And there was, a, there was a good hole, obviously, running QB power, and they were, they were kind of ready for it. But, like, Olu is, does a fantastic job in not only these zone schemes – but when he gets in the gap scheme, he can get low, sink, punch that hip, and, and really understands what we are trying to do as an offense. Where do I need to create these gaps? And where do I need to position these guys uh, to, to allow my guys to have as much green space as possible? Yeah, dude, this is another one of my favorite uh, favorite plays from this reel. Boom. And and honestly, in 20, you say, you know, I'd like him to get a little lower on 26, but 26, this is Michigan having a great offense, uh, defensive line. Sinks, he kind of like sinks and he gets on that one leg, kind of creating a little like a tripod essentially. So it's harder for Olu to get down on that hip, but he, he gets under him as best as he can, mm-hmm. digs him out, throws him over and cleans it up. Obviously didn't didn't end too good for us there, but <laughs> I guess that's what you get when you run QB power, huh? <laughs> Dude, I mean, it, it's – it's to me at least, it's honestly pretty insane that, you know, the Jets were I, – I mean, I remember doing, like, mock drafts and stuff and reading people's mock drafts in uh, January, just like December, January, and people were trying to figure out ways to get Olu to New York. Like, man, there has to be a way that he can fall. And then, mm-hmm. lo and behold, we actually trade back a pick, recoup some later round picks, and snag him at 11 because, uh, you know, Minnesota wanted to come up from McCarthy. Mm-hmm. But – yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I'm totally thrilled with the pick. I first of all, I mean, left tackle has been such a major issue for New York for really since the Brickishaw Ferguson retired all those years ago. It's just I, kind of been, legendary. He still got the best best name in uh, best name in NFL history, right there. Yeah, I mean, so when he retired, it was just like uh, random vets here and there, never really finding that go to guy. You know, like like you mentioned, Beckton didn't really work out. Uh, had had the great rookie season, but as far as just, like, longevity and stuff, it's it's just it sucked. And that's that's the reality for a lot of guys. Is is the a lot of these guys coming out? They have the potential. Like Becton could have been a franchise left tackle, and I saw he just got signed somewhere else. I saw um, Philly, yeah, Philly, yeah. They always they always try to snatch guys up and get them right right towards the end of their career. So hopefully he can make something of it. But uh, you know, it's just when when you struggle like that early in your career and injuries. It, it completely can destroy your mental. So it, that's that's really difficult to have to deal with. But, you know, I, I think you guys found your uh, future 10 to 15 years here at, at left tackle. Dude, that's awesome, man. Like, I feel like just I, I feel like Olu just checks so many different boxes as far as having potential, coming in with a good understanding of leverage and all these different, you know, points that you're making. Athleticism, pass protection, production mm-hmm. as well you know, like not allowing sacks. I mean, dude, even to get, even in that, uh, that play against Ohio state that you showed early on could be this one. No, I don't think so. no, no, we got a couple more, but like you said, I mean, that's his, it's his worst. Like I said, once again, it's his worst play of the season and that's the yeah, result. And, and it's like, yeah, he's, you know, me, that, like, that, that play right there too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say like, to me, like, that's not humiliating. Like, that's not, Oh my God, what the hell, man? Like, yeah, you got yeah. beat going up against a stud. Yeah. future top 10 pick it's just like not the end of the world let's let's reference the other 
however many 15 games where he was just flat out dominant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he really didn't. I don't think they counted that as a sack. I don't think he – I'm trying to remember. I, I don't really think he gave up a sack in his career. He might have given up one. I, I forget. I don't know if you know that. I'm pretty sure he didn't give up one. So, I mean, like I said, just either way, this is someone who could easily go a whole season and he does. no one touches the quarterback because of him. I mean, that's, that is absolutely worth the 11th pick. Uh, and I, like I said, I think it's crazy he didn't go earlier. But you guys got fantastic value. Jets definitely, definitely knocked it out of the park with this pick. Awesome, man. Awesome. So do you have any more plays on the reel that you wanted to go over? No, I think that's everything. I, we, we Five pass, five run. I figured it covered it. I uh, kind of showed a little bit of outside zone, inside zone, got some uh, gap scheme stuff and uh, showed him a lot in pass pro and how, how he uses his hands, how he's able to sink and the leverage that he creates uh, just, a, just a natural athlete and uh, un understands and has great football IQ. I think that's something that is really big, too. He is a student of the game. So you will continue to see his play uh, just just rise. I mean, his stock. This is this is a guy. If you could buy stock, I would buy a lot of old <laughs> his stock right now because he is still going up. Dude, so sick, man. Uh, yo, I appreciate you hopping on. One last question, though. One last question. This doesn't really have to do with old. Well, I guess I could kind of tie it to fashion new like, but I, I really want to hear it from an offensive lineman's perspective. So the Jets, these past couple of years, have just been notorious for having tons of injuries mm. and one of the practice habits that the jets have is playing guys in different positions almost on a day-to-day -day basis so like you know when training camp rolls around they'll take somebody like carter warren who's the backup right tackle uh could potentially be the backup he's basically a swing tackle at this point mm. One day they'll play him at left tackle. The next day they'll line him up at right tackle. Then they'll bounce him back over to left tackle for a couple days. Then they'll shoot him back over to right tackle. They'll do that with guard and center. And I understand the, the versatility aspect of it. But is there something there as far as, you know, are, are we maximizing guys' potential at specific positions? Do you think that's a smart idea? Or yeah. is it kind of kind of kind of questionable to you? Yeah, I got to be honest, Dad, it sounds like you are completely screwing over your offensive linemen. I'm sorry to that, man, because you, you got to understand, you need to get in a rhythm when you're playing offensive line um, and, and get comfortable in the position you're in. And when you play once, going from one side of the line to the other, it is not, it's a lot easier to me to go right guard to right tackle instead of right guard to left guard. Like the, when you switch sides, it is like going to bathroom using number two and, and wipe him with the opposite hand. Like it does not work. It feels wrong. You don't feel correct. Like putting Olu at right tackle, he would probably struggle and it would just be a dumb decision. So I don't, you know, I'm not say struggle because he's still elite, but like he's, he's never played it. So why, uh, you know, put him in that position as far as like other swing guys, I understand mixing them around and having them play other positions. But I think if you're mixing them that often, that is such a mistake because you are making them have to just think about a million different things and they can't get comfortable. They can't get right for when you need them to come in uh, at, at whatever position you're trying to put them in at. So I understand, uh, you know, trying to create that versatility, but I, I'll just tell you flat out, they are, that's a mistake to be, to be doing. If it's that frequent and if it really is like most days you're playing a different position, just back and forth, it's, it's not good uh, for an offensive lineman. And it's hard for them to really feel comfortable and confident. And that's a big thing in offensive line play is truly being confident. And if you're doing that, it's it's difficult. If, unless you're a buddy on the Packers that uh, that I forget his name, but jumps all around. There's like a few guys that can do it in the league. But constantly doing that with someone who you know isn't an elite level talent and has the ability to do that, I think I think is a mistake. You got to give them more time to get comfortable at, at specific positions. Uh, and then you can start to kind of move everybody around. Hell yeah, man. I love the insight. I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not an offensive lineman, right? I'm not an O-line coach, but to me that always just kind of, it rubbed me the wrong way. I, I understand that, you know, you, you kind of want positional versatility, but I mean, man, even AVT, like you talked about before, like he, he's played left tackle. He's played left guard. He's played right guard. He's played right tackle. He's bounced really the only thing he has done is center um and he's had two season ending injuries i don't want to say oh that's to blame for him or anything like yeah. that um 
Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah, you, you can't say that's. I can't support that. You know anything as far as the injuries with that? I don't know how you guys practice, how hard you practice. Uh, okay. so, I mean, there's there is some stuff with that and how you know facilities and take care of your body. I know you guys do have awful turf, so I will say that is something I haven't played there, but I've heard from many guys I know that you guys are uh, definitely not not too oh. happy in the eyes of the players yeah. at, at MetLife. Um, so. That could definitely. I mean, that's that's huge. If the guys don't like the turf, I don't. I haven't talked to anybody specifically on the Jets, but everybody I know hates the turf. That can be a serious problem. Um, but yeah, with like Elijah Vera Tucker, so he's played all over his whole career. See, I like. I think that's a mistake. I think when you look at these all-pro guys, it is a lot of dudes that have played the same position their whole career. Uh, so set him in at left guard, right guard, like whatever you want him to be. But let him just play that and and don't let an injury or something dictate him moving around. That is a dude that can play at an all pro level. Uh, and that's what it like, that's what it seems like. I remember how he's playing. I haven't fully been in uh keeping up on him hundred percent, but it, this was really talented cat. So if he's been good for you guys, I know he's been injured, but when he's on the field, he's he's a talented dude. Moving him around like that, I, I don't think you're getting the best uh version of Elijah Vera Tucker. So if I'm the I'm the if I'm the Jets GM, I'm I'm saying we need to work this guy in at guard, right guard, left guard. I think that's his best spot. Pick one of those uh, and and stay with it because he should be locked in. Maybe put him next to Olu. I don't know, left guard and then him at left tackle. Lock down that that left side of the line. I don't know what you guys got at left guard right now. Yeah, yeah. So we just scooped up uh, John Simpson. He was he right. started 17 Ravens. games for uh, for Baltimore a year ago. Uh, so we'll see what happens there, but bro, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know I said 25 minutes we're, we're approaching 50. So, yo, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Good, man. I really enjoyed it, man. Thanks so much for having me on. And then, uh, also too, if you want to let everybody know where to find you in the podcast, and of course, all the links will be listed down below in the description as well. Yeah. On uh YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, every platform, I'm just Landon Tangwall. This is the behind the wall podcast that I do. Uh, you can find me on all socials, just my full name, Landon Tangwall. Like I said, a retired offensive lineman covering a lot of football, a lot of college football. And if you're interested on more uh, Penn State offensive linemen, too, coming out, we have pumped them out the past couple of years, uh, three in three in the draft the other last year, three in the draft this year. So uh, definitely something to keep the eyes on, if, especially if you, you guys need some more help on the offensive line. Awesome, dude. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for everybody tuning in, watching, hanging out. As always, go Jets.